You've just learned about a new math concept. Everything makes sense to you. You feel energetic and motivated to tackle the questions until you get a wrong answer. The motivation slowly fades away. You feel the frustration building, bringing your math practice to an end. You can't help but wonder why you understand the math, but just can't get the questions right. Hi, welcome to my channel. My name is Han. I just graduated from Columbia this May. I studied math and operations research in college. As someone who has been battling with math for over 17 years now, I have not always been a math person. When I was in high school, I really struggled with math. I often received C's and D's in my math classes. And no matter how much time and effort I put in it, I just cannot get the questions right and receive the scores that I wanted on exams. I thought I might not be smart enough and couldn't pursue a career in STEM. Especially there were students in my class put in way less time than I did, but received really good grades. So after thousands of hours practicing math and learning from some of the best teachers in the world, I finally realized that I was just doing it wrong. So in this video, I'm going to explain to you why you understand the math, but you just couldn't do the questions right. I will also show you that how you can fix it with some actionable tips that completely transformed my experience with studying math and helped me succeed in some of the hardest classes at Columbia University. Let's just get into it. For context, let me explain to you how I was studying before I realized something was wrong. I would really pay attention in class and carefully take notes. I spent hours looking at how to solve different math problems, going over each problem carefully to see how it's done. You may stop me and be like, hold on, that doesn't sound bad, sounds like you were a really hard worker. But if you pay close attention, the problem here is it's solely passive learning and no active learning at all. Passive learning is a method of learning where students receive information from outside sources and try to internalize it, which include listening to lectures, reading, and watching demonstrations. And active learning means you're actively involved in the learning process, basically means that you are doing something besides just receiving the information, and which includes discussions, practicing questions, and teaching others. In our education system, there are lots of passive learning and very little active learning. Many research studies have shown that passive learning is not as effective as active learning in math and science education. So if you feel like you're spending lots of time in studying math but still not get good results, it's probably because you are doing too much passive learning and not enough active learning. Math is a skill to help you solve problems. You have to know how to use it by doing it. You wouldn't say that you can drive a car just by watching someone else drive and memorizing all the traffic rules. You have to get into the car and practice. This way you can know how it feels, which part you have problems, or any complications you may run into. So I hate to break this to you, but if you only read and listen how the math is done, Sometimes you may think, oh, I understand the math, but actually you don't. So how can we actually do more active learning in our math studying? If there's one thing I wish you can take away from this video is if you get a question wrong, always redo it independently until you get it right. Lots of time people get really upset when they get a question wrong and start thinking, oh, what is wrong with me? I just cannot understand why I cannot do math. You know what, the question in front of you is literally telling you what's wrong. What I often did was if I get a question wrong, I just read through the answers and try to understand it and just move on. But again, the problem here is if I only read the solutions and try to understand how it's done, it's still a form of passive learning. You wouldn't go to the doctor, spend two days doing all the lab work for a physical exam, and receiving a result that says you have a heart issue and you just go, oh crap, they say I have a heart issue and just move on with life. You would actually follow up with the doctor, take pills every day or pursue whatever the necessary treatment it is until the disease is cured or under control. 
every time you practice a question, it's a diagnostic process to see whether you understand the math concept and your ability to solve the questions. And you need to realize that the diagnosis is not the most important part, and what truly matters is the treatment. You've already invested all your time and efforts in reading the question, trying to understand the question, thinking about the question, write the question. If you don't follow up with what's wrong, it's really just a waste of time. So follow up with the question that's wrong, figure out precisely which step you made a mistake, really trying to understand why you made that mistake and how you can prevent it from happening again. And doing the question again is the follow-up doctor appointment that they will tell you whether the disease is truly cured or not. Because the doctor may tell you, yeah, you know what, you're good to go. Or they may tell you it's still there, you still haven't fixed it. Or they may even say that, ah, your heart disease is cured, but now you have a liver disease. So make sure you test yourself by doing the questions again until you get it right. So how do you actually follow up with your math disease and then found the treatment for it, aka how to fix the problem? So essentially you compare your wrong answer to the correct answer and figure out which exact step that you had the problem. In my experience, there are four types of problems. Let's just dive into each one of those. Firstly, an understanding problem might arise when you fail to grasp a math concept or the equation you recently learned, or perhaps you don't understand the question itself. To help you understand math better, consider use the Feynman Technique. It is a learning method that used by the Nobel Prize winning physicist Richard Feynman. Basically, the way you understand a concept is by explaining it as if you're explaining it to a child. While doing this, notice which part did you struggle to explain, what details did you miss, what part is really hard for you to put into simple words. Answering those questions will show you which part are you missing. The act of explaining to yourself or teaching others is a form of active learning. Sometimes when we're thinking about things in our own mind, we think we understand it well, but we may miss some important stuff. So the best way to uncovering those details is to explaining it out loud, verbalize it, and teaching someone else who doesn't know about the topic. And the more you can put it into simple terms, the better understanding you have about the topic. Secondly, you might face issues with memorization when you can't remember an equation, function, or the specific steps required to solve a particular type of problem. In my opinion, in math, memorization is really often unnecessary because everything can be proven. If you're really motivated not to memorize anything, you don't even need to memorize 1 plus 1 equals to 2 because there are 162 pages of proofs in abstract algebra to prove why 1 plus 1 equals to 2. Therefore, I highly recommend you try to understand everything before you just straight jump into memorization. But in our daily math studying, memorization does have an important role because it really can save us time. In situations where memorization is necessary, the best techniques is active recall and space repetition. Third, some questions may need a specific trick or tactic that you're not just familiar with. And my recommendation will be just practice more questions. But whenever you encounter a new trick, pay attention how it's applied in what type of question, and then collect that trick in your math problem solving toolbox. Next time you see a similar question, you can just pull up your toolbox and use the tricks that you've collected, like a Pokemon situation. The fourth, you do actually know how to answer questions, and you could have done it correctly if you hadn't just made a single silly mistake. Believe me, I understand the frustration. I experience it all the time, especially with more challenging problems. The answer just become really lengthy and requires so many steps, making it really hard not to make mistakes. So pay close attention to the common mistakes that you make and keep these in mind the next time you work on the question. Is it a calculation error or did you misread the problem? For example, I used to make silly mistakes like in the last line it was 45, but the next line I just randomly, magically write 65. So I noticed that and tried to figure out why. Turns out the way I wrote 4 was really close to 6. 
So I just changed the way I write for it and then just pay more close attention. So that's today's video. Thank you so much for watching.